Imagine a future where humanity not only dreams of walking on Mars, but actually arrives there in just a few weeks. A future where traveling to the farthest planets in our solar system becomes an accessible reality, no longer a feat requiring years of planning and months of travel. This isn't just the dream of scientists or science fiction enthusiasts. It's a tangible goal made possible by a revolutionary technology called nuclear thermal propulsion. For decades, chemical rockets have propelled us beyond Earth's atmosphere, taking us to the moon, launching probes and satellites, and allowing us to explore the universe. But while this technology has been effective, it has limitations, high fuel consumption, long travel times, and limited payload capacity. Now, imagine a system that could radically transform these dynamics. An engine that uses nuclear energy to generate thrust that's enormously more efficient, capable of reducing travel times to Mars by 50% or more, and with the ability to carry more payload to support ambitious scientific missions or space colonies. With nuclear thermal propulsion, all this could become a reality. But what's behind this technology? How does a nuclear engine really work in space? What are the advantages over current systems? And what challenges do we still need to address to make it operational? Nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP, represents an advanced technology that leverages the principles of nuclear fission to generate heat and produce thrust, offering a powerful and highly efficient alternative to traditional chemical rocket engines. At the heart of the NTP system is a nuclear reactor designed to produce a substantial amount of heat. Unlike chemical engines, which burn fuel and oxidizer to generate energy, nuclear thermal propulsion uses nuclear fission. This process occurs when the nuclei of atoms, typically uranium or plutonium, are split into smaller nuclei through a controlled reaction. Fission releases a significant amount of energy in the form of heat which is crucial for powering the engine. The heat produced by the nuclear reactor is transferred to a propellant, usually liquid hydrogen, chosen for its high efficiency and low mass. Hydrogen is stored in its liquid form at extremely low temperatures, and when it comes into contact with the reactor's heating system, is heated to very high temperatures, often exceeding 2,000 degrees Celsius. This heating process occurs through heat exchangers that ensure effective heat transfer from the reactor to the propellant. Once the hydrogen is heated and converted into a gas, it is directed to an expulsion nozzle. The nozzle is designed to accelerate the gas to extremely high speeds through a process called adiabatic expansion. The hot, high-speed gas exits the nozzle, generating thrust forward according to Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The thrust generated by the expulsion of gas is much more efficient than chemical engines. As nuclear technology allows for greater thrust with less propellant, one of the most significant benefits of nuclear thermal engines is their ability to drastically reduce travel times to distant destinations within the solar system. This is particularly relevant for missions to planets like Mars. Currently, Missions to Mars require about six to seven months of travel with traditional chemical rockets. The increased thrust generated by nuclear engines allows for faster speeds compared to chemical engines, enabling the journey between Earth and Mars to be completed in less than three months. This reduction in travel time not only improves mission efficiency, but also reduces astronauts' exposure to space radiation and the psychological stress associated with long-duration spaceflights. Another crucial advantage of nuclear thermal engines is their ability to increase the payload capacity that a spacecraft can carry. With chemical engines, a significant portion of the rocket's weight is made up of the propellant needed to generate thrust. This limits the amount of useful cargo that can be transported to the destination. With nuclear engines, there is an increase in payload capacity, which is essential for exploration and colonization missions, where it's crucial to have onboard resources such as construction materials, habitats, food, and scientific research instruments. For example, a mission to Mars with a nuclear thermal engine 
could not only land on the planet, but also carry everything needed to establish a permanent base. This includes everything from habitat modules to life support systems, scientific laboratories, and resources for producing oxygen and food. As of today, nuclear thermal propulsion is in an advanced stage of development, with significant progress made by space agencies and private companies. NASA has dedicated considerable resources, advancing studies and tests for the design and implementation of compact nuclear reactors. Recent successes include tests of the DRACO project, conducted in collaboration with the DARPA, which have demonstrated the technology's feasibility under simulated terrestrial conditions. However, these tests have not yet included real space missions. Despite the progress, significant technical challenges remain, including creating effective shielding to protect the crew from nuclear radiation, developing advanced cooling systems to manage heat, and ensuring the reactor's stability and operational reliability in extreme space conditions. Crucial next steps will include the launch and testing of space-based demonstrators to evaluate nuclear thermal propulsion performance in real environments, while international cooperation and evolving space safety regulations will play a key role in the technology's advancement. Estimating the precise year when nuclear thermal propulsion will be fully ready for operational space use is challenging, as it depends on various technological, financial, and regulatory factors. However, based on current progress and ongoing program forecasts, nuclear thermal propulsion could be ready for the first operational space missions between 2030 and 2035. So we just have to wait, and in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the video.